Good morning. It's early on Ash Wednesday morning. Thank you for joining us as we mark Ash Wednesday, the beginning of Lent. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Those words of the prophet remind us that we lay ourselves open before God in Lent as we journey through these 40 days to the cross and to the resurrection. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Early in the morning he came again to the temple. All the people came to him and he sat down and began to teach them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and made her stand before all the people. They said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. Now what do you say? They said this to test Jesus, so that they might have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, Let anyone among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. And once again he bent down and wrote on the ground. When they heard it, they went away, one by one, beginning with the elders. And Jesus was left alone with the woman standing before him. Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? No one has condemned you. 
She said, No one, sir. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go your way, and from now on do not sin again. Here ends the lesson. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We begin Lent by receiving ashes. You are dust, and to dust you shall return. As Pope Francis said, the dust sprinkled on our heads brings us back to earth. The cross marked in ash on our foreheads reminds us that we are mortal, finite, and limited. It reminds us that we are not God, quite the opposite. We are prone to failure, to cause suffering to ourselves and to others. Perhaps we have been especially reminded of our frailty in the last year. Coronavirus has abruptly put an end to any illusion of false security we may have had, whether they be the security of health, finance, social importance, for many, these securities we so readily rely upon have been stripped bare and our true vulnerability revealed. You are dust, and to dust you shall return. The Pharisees remind us what it is to resist this reality and to seek to secure our own worth at the expense of others we deem to be more broken, more fragile, more unlovable. However, before Christ, these fantasies of self-protection are shattered. Pausing before the condemning Pharisees and writing in the ground with his finger, some have argued Jesus was inscribing the sins of the accusers in the dust. Whether or not this is true, his response certainly unsettles the assuredness of their judgment. Let he without sin cast the first stone. The word for without sin here in the Greek can mean not simply without sin, but without sinful desire. As if Jesus is in effect saying, very well, stone her. But only if you've never wanted to do the same thing yourself. If this is the measure you wish to be held by and to be judged according to, then who can stand? Jesus' words and this season of Lent invite us to see ourselves not aloof from the world, but deeply and inescapably implicated in its brokenness. The person who has hurt us, the people in the news who are hurting others, those known to have committed the worst atrocities, we need to see in them the seeds of our own unfaithfulness, our own capacity for evil. Without this acknowledgement, on some level we are still refusing to accept that we are held entirely by God's graciousness, that true life is truly a gift. So long as we seek to secure our own worth by comparison to the worth of another, we are keeping defended that part of our life that we don't really trust God with. I'm ashamed of this aspect of my life, but at least I'm not as bad as them, we tell ourselves as cold comfort. But the way to God, to fullness of life, Len reminds us, is through renunciation, letting go, acknowledging that try as we might, we are not ultimately in control. And if there's a silver lining in this lockdown, it is an increased awareness of that ultimate reality. But this is good news, because in letting go, we discover ourselves to be held by a God who never lets us go. In renouncing our own standards of judgment, the securities we often prefer to depend upon, we find ourselves like this woman saved and dependent entirely on Christ's graceful judgment. 
Is no one left to judge you? Then neither do I. Go and sin no more. In letting go and in dying to what we thought was secure, we discover that we are found, transformed, and raised to newness of life in God. In the ashes sprinkled on our heads, we are reminded that we are dust, but we are dust that is loved by God. Dust that God moulds into his creation and carves his image into. Dust from which grows the tree of the cross. So that faced with our failure and weakness, we learn to see grow from this same dust, the second Adam, the death of the old and the promise of the new. So let us pray. Father, as we begin this season of Lent, help us to let go of our own condemnation of others and of ourselves. By your Spirit alive in us, help us to see ourselves honestly and truthfully, to know our frailty and dependence on you, and so be transformed ever anew into your likeness. Amen. So we pray as Jesus taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. God give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourself, to take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you.